Ronnie CG here. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to create 10 of the best remote trigger systems in all of Bedrock. Now, these systems are specifically designed to remotely trigger systems that are much further away in ticking areas. And these can be anything you want. You can trigger any code that you want, and this can be as complex or as simple as you desire. So um, let's check this out. Here, these systems in yellow in the back are all the systems that will be needed in a ticking area. Um, so a ticking area, if you don't already know, is an area that is always loaded. Um, act, act, it acts as though a player is near so that command blocks will still continue to run and crops will still continue to grow. So in this case, and the first example I'm going to show you here um, will be this system. But before we get to that, let's, let's go over quickly how to build making a ticking area. So go to where your command blocks are like this um, and go ahead and type in ticking area and then add circle, and then put three tildes like that, which is the location that you're standing. And now you have the choice between one and four. Four is the max radius. So what that is, is it's all, um, this, this radius is size in chunks. So that will be up to four chunks in all directions will be loaded. So that's a pretty large area. Um, and now you need to name it. So you can name it spawn or commands, whatever you want, and then click enter and that will be created. You can have up to 10 different ticking areas. Um, so make sure you name it something that makes sense um, and make sure whatever you build is um, Especially command wise is always in a ticking area. So it's always active anywhere in the game. It'll run when you need it. Okay So this very first system is a very common system that we use in bedrock and it's a system that execute ex Executes code when an item is detected So right now I have this item called activate me and when I toss it you'll see this will happen system runs successfully um, So it's repeat unconditional always active and here we're, we are, we're detecting that item. And if there's a space in the item name, like I have, you have to put quotes. If there's no space, you don't need the quotes. So it's going to check to see if there's a player within three blocks of that item. And if there is, it's gonna run this code, tell raw on this message. So in this case, um, you would put your own code here. And then after this, you can put a bunch of chain conditional blocks as long as your heart desires. At the end, you need a a kill command, which is a chain unconditional always active command to kill that item continuously. So that item doesn't stay on the ground somewhere. You need it always destroyed um, right away after it's used. Um, so type in whatever name you've got for your item. Um, so again, this is if we use to trigger anything. Um, one common use of the system is teleporting. So we need a player throws the item, they teleport. You can go and check out my teleport video on that specifically. Um, so this is a simple conditional based system and here's Two other variants. So here, this variant is looking for a specific score, and then it will run a code. So repeat unconditional always active, and if it detects a player um, with a score of ten in the example scoreboard, um, and the score that's just a scoreboard that's called example, then it will run whatever code you type here. Um, of course, you can then have it run all these chain conditional blocks at the end. However, keep in mind that um, depending on how your system is built you may need to reset their score back to zero so this command will continuously run. Um, if their score remains 10, it will keep on running this command over and over again, um, and you may not want that to happen. Um, also, very quickly, it's probably useful for you to know that um, how, you can, how you can manipulate this scores command. So um, if we do scores dot dot, um, 10 dot dot, that will um, count any score from 10 or higher. So if the player has a score of 10 or higher, this code will run. Um, you can also do dot dot 10, and then any score 10 or below um, will execute this code. Um, you can also do something like this, where 10 dot dot and then 30. So now, if it's 10 or 30 or anything in between, then the code will run successfully. And this is useful for a whole bunch of reasons, and um, I'm sure you can start imagining why. Okay, and of course you can have a bunch of chain conditional blocks, and, and of course somewhere you might want to reset their command, their, their uh, um, score, like I said. Okay, and now here is uh, an example of a system that will detect the player is on grass, and then if they're standing on grass, it will then do something, whatever you want. Um, so here, let's look at the code. Repeat unconditional, always active. Um, in this case, I've limited this effective range to only three, um, a radius of three, three blocks around this command block, so that way it's not spamming me when I'm standing over here explaining stuff to you guys. Um, but you can have this be as large or as small as you want. Basically, I have it doing minus 0.1, so it's very specifically right under my feet. So if I'm jumping, it, it, will, it will know I'm jumping. So we want to make sure it knows that I'm standing on the ground firmly and then it's detecting grass. Um, you need to put zero in here for the data value. And then right here, it can be any code you want. 
Um, and then you can type in whatever code. You can type uh, kill, um, kill at S, and that will kill whatever player sitting on grass, no matter what. Um, and uh, whatever one, any, any command you want, you can issue like that. And of course, if I stand here, it's just gonna it's, um, send a message to me. So it's gonna whisper, you're standing on grass. Um, and while, while this is active and success, successfully running, this command um, comparator right here will, will also successfully execute, his, sex, successfully execute because this guy is successfully executing. So this will stay powered. And as soon as I move back and this cannot detect me anymore, then this will fail. This, can, this is now failing to execute and then this will also stop executing as well. This will also unpower. So that's how that works and you can do whatever you want and a bunch of chain conditions after that and access any code. You can do whatever code you want after that. Okay, so now we have uh, location-based um, arguments. So there's two in the game. Um, so it's two, two very obvious ones. There's, there's a radius, which you've seen already, and then there's also the volumetric arguments, which are dx, dy, and dz. So in this case, if I step on this yellow pad, the system will activate. If I step off this yellow pad, it will deactivate after a second. Um, and it works flawlessly and it will never break and it's really, really awesome. And you can use this for all sorts of things. The system can be as large, this, this radius that you're checking for, not radius, but in this case, the volumetric area that you're checking for, can be as large or as small as you'd like. That's entirely up to you. Um, and one example of what you might use this for is um, you can use a system like this to, um, like say, say players at like the hub or spawn or whatever you want to call it, and once they're there in a certain large radius, maybe while they're there, a, system, a certain system is activated, like maybe a generator or some sort is activated, generating some sort of item. Um, but when that player leaves, that system will disable itself and no longer be active. And that's another point I should stress here. Another valuable part about all these remote systems is that only the minimum number of command blocks is ever running at one time. So the, basically the system is idle until it needs to be activated. Once the system is activated, then it all kicks into high gear and then it disables when it's no longer activated. And each of these systems has different ways of deactivating and handling that exact scenario. So very powerful stuff and very efficient for realms and servers so that it doesn't bog them down. Okay, so let's see how this works. Volumetric commands, how does that work? This is something that's very confusing to a lot of people. In this case, you need to pick the square, like one of the, one of the corners of the area that you want to, of the zone you want to create. So in this case, I want a zone that will effectively span from, from this block right here all the way up and over to this block. So if I'm standing anywhere in that radius, in that not radius technically speaking, but anywhere in this specified volumetric area, then it will run um, and, it will, and it will do code. So here, um, repeat unconditional always active. You can see this XYZ value is that lower corner that I showed you first. Um, so that's the location from there. And here's the DX, DY, and DZ um, argument. Now this is confusing to a lot of people, but here's how it works. So basically these values right here can either be positive or negative. And if whatever their positive or negative um, state is, it will determine which direction it goes. So if as you can see where, let's go over here for a second. So this is where I'm testing for. Um, this is um, negative 133 on the X. If I go to the left, two spaces, one, two, I'm going closer to, closer to positive. And again, I want to make sure I encapsulate this whole area. So I need to go to the left from this block, one, two, to do that. So I'm going to do dx equals two. And it's a positive two because we're moving in a positive direction. If I was trying to encapsulate this area instead, and I'm moving from this block, I'm going to go one, two in a negative direction. So it would technically be dx minus two. So that's how that works. Um, and so basically, um, as you can see, dx equals 2 is 2 in a positive direction, so we end up at negative 131. Um, dy equals 1 is um, move one step up in the y po um, positive y axis, so it, it would go up to also y equals 5. And then dz equals 2, of course, is z equals 17. So that way, what that looks like um, from a visual perspective is it looks like this. So this entire area is being tested against to see if there's a player in this space, and if there is, the system will activate. So when, because I can't get in that area, I cannot activate the system, uh, as you can see here. But if I go on top again, I can't get into that area, so I can't activate it. Um, and that works really, really well. So um, if I break a hole like this and I stand in here, I'm inside that volumetric area, and now it will activate. Um, also, if I break a hole right here, I'm still in that volumetric area and it will activate. So that's how that works and I hope you guys understand that. It's very confusing to a lot of people and I hope this explanation helped you.
Um, okay, so the way the system works, as you can see, repeat unconditional, always active. Here's that command again. So once it detects, um, detects a player in that location, it'll set a different location to a redstone block. So here I plugged in the coordinates for this location and this will be, become a redstone block and will power everything here. So once this is powered, this block right here is repeat unconditional needs redstone and this is going to continue testing to see if a player is still in that location. Um, so once a player, um, if a player is still in this location, still in this yellow area, this comparator will still stay powered and this, this redstone torch will be disabled. But when there is no player detected, this command will fail to execute because there's no player there. This comparator will disable, and then this redstone um, torch right here will then re-enable and then disable the system. So repeat unconditional needs redstone with a 20 ticks, 20 ticks of delay, and we want to disable this. So this is normally on by default. Normally execute on first tick it looks like this. We need to turn it off, otherwise it won't work properly. So we turn it off just like this and put 20 ticks of delay. Um, so that this location right here, set location error, is this redstone location right here. So basically it will, yes, disable the system. So once this is powered, this block will also become powered and this redstone torch will become unpowered. So this, this is just gonna be our alert system, impulse unconditional needs redstone, and here's just an alert. And if you want to be specific and only alert players near where they activated the system, you can go ahead and plug in um, the radius, uh, like the middle coordinates in a radius or whatever, and here's the message. Um, and if you've never seen this command before, all you need to modify is the area between this quotation mark and this quotation mark. So anything you type between these quotation marks will show up. Um, and now we're going to issue a sound chain condition always active to that location and all players near there. And then we're going to power this lamp right here. Um, chain condition always active, set a redstone block at that lamp and power it. Wonderful. So now, this is, now the players know the system's activated and there's various ways that they've been informed via sound, via text, and also via a visual cue with this, this lamp. You can do that if you want to, as many visual cues or, I mean, cues if you want, it's up to you. Now, once the system is disabled and there's no longer a redstone block here, this torch will repower once again and that will disable, um, that will deactivate the alert system. That will send out a deactivation alert. So impulse unconditional needs redstone. Again, here's a negative uh, message, and I made it red for that reason. You can change the color to whatever you want. If you don't know how to do colors, look up Minecraft color text. Um, chain condition always active. Same thing. We're going to play a, de a deactivation sound for the beacon. And now we're going to unpower that um, lamp that we showed you, that I showed you. Chain condition always active. Uh, set location to air. Okay, so that will disable that. Um, now, I'm going to mention this one time, and I'm not going to mention this again, but just know this applies to every system here pretty much. Um, all these systems can be modified to be as complex or simple as you choose, um, and they're limited only by what you know or what you're intending to do. So you can go ahead and have um, this power, these three impulse blocks. You can also have it power three more um, repeating blocks right here. So when a redstone block appears here, it'll power the middle one, which will power both ones on the side for both of these. So you can have all that going on. You can also have a repeating block here and a bunch of chain conditionals right here, um, just like that. I gotta change my game mode because I stepped back too far. I'll show you that in a second. Um, and yeah, so you, you can also, if you want, have this, instead of being an always running command, you can always have this be an impulse, depending on what you're trying to do. So yeah, that can be as complicated or as simple as you want, and you can really go all out with this and make it very intricate. Um, so that's how that works. Now this back here is an example of the other location um, arguments, and that is the um, radius. So in this case, um, if I get rid of, let me just move all this stuff up, I just get it out of the way. Okay, so now that's out of the way. Um, this is an example of a setting up a zone to protect an area from griefing. So let's say this this little adorable yellow bowl here represented a giant shop um, that players would interact with. Now you want to make sure the shop is safe from um, players tampering with it um, and messing it up. So you can force them into adventure when they get too close to it. So watch this. As I approach. Um, I'm suddenly forced into adventure, and there, I can not damage this shop no matter what I do. Um, so obviously you would have um, a much larger radius for around the building, and it would apply for all of it. You can actually also use DXDY and DZ for a similar system, but uh, I'm not going over that in this video. Um, and once you leave this radius, you're actually automatically placed back into survival, and you can uh, seamlessly, and you can, you're once again back in survival and you're doing your thing. Once you approach the um, shop again, you're back into adventure. Now that's a very powerful, simple use of the um, the radius argument, and here's how that works. Now I'm switched back into creative over here. So 
we're going to get the coordinate of that middle block. So that's the coordinate we're going to use. And you don't even need the block there. You can delete it if you want. I just left it there to, as a visual cue. But repeat unconditional always active. Um, so here we're going to do game mode A, which is adventure at all players who are, um, again, this is the coordinate of that middle block. And anyone who's in the radius of six around there, which is the maximum range you can break something, um, will be placed into um, adventure. Now, remember the six, because we're going to plug the six into the next code. Um, now, the next code is when it forces the game mode to um, survival. So chain unconditional always active. Now, that six is important because we're going to plug that six into rm equals six instead of r equals six. And that is um, ra <clears throat> radius minimum. So again, we're going to use the same middle coordinates here and s for survival. So basically what this does is it's going to ignore everything that is six blocks away and closer. And not gonna, it's not going to do anything. It's not going to change anyone's game mode until they leave six blocks away and then they're between um, seven blocks and eight blocks away. So if they're um, in that ring of two blocks outside of this um, six block here, so either seven or eight, then it will force their game mode into survival um, very quickly and seamlessly. Um, so that's how that works. And right here, just a quick example, I actually force my game mode to C and creative when I'm over here. So chain unconditional arms active. And I actually use this block right here as the coordinate for this command. Um, so if I'm within a radius of four from the block I just showed you, then I will be placed into to, um, creative, which is what I've done here. So that's a great use of that, and that's how that works. Okay, now over here, very, very cool. Um, this is a trap chest, and when a trap chest is open, it powers a block that is above, which also can power a command block below that. So this is a repeat on Lee's redstone. It's gonna set a certain location to redstone block, which is right here. There's no tick delay on this or anything, by the way. It's gonna set a redstone block to right here. And then this is just a typical um, alert um, command, just like this, nothing special. Um, but what's cool about this, um, and this is something that I figured out and I'm quite proud of it, it's really, really neat. Um, but check this out. So if I open this chest and um, a redstone um, block is placed right here, check out what happens. So it's going to continuously be removed and added um, constantly. And it looks like this impulse block is being activated numerous times because normally impulse blocks activate every single time that they, um, that the charge is re reissued to them. So a redstone, every time a new pulse comes their way, they activate. Um, however, the way the system is set up, this is actually a continuous redstone um, signal. So it's not actually breaking the redstone signal, it's continuous. So this command only issued one time. So check this out. If I look at my chat here, this system ran successfully, and that's the message that this command block is stating. So it's only actually, even though it looks like it would be activating numerous times, it's not, which is amazing because this is no different than if all of us is wired up close. It's working the exact same way, really, really far apart. This can be hundreds or thousands of blocks apart, and it would still work just like this. It's working identically to how it would work if it was all wired up close, which is so cool. It's so flawless. Um, now, that's great and all, but um, how does this work? Well, let's check this out. So repeat unconditional needs redstone. You need to turn off the execute on first tick. That's why this works. So turn that off and then set the delay to 20, 20 ticks. Um, and now um, we're gonna set the block above to air. So once this block gets powered, it will set the block above to air. And again, make sure execute on first tick is off. Um, okay, so that is what allows us to have a continuous charge. And what that basically is like, is it's like this. Um, while that chest is open and we are interacting with that chest, it will give a constant redstone pulse somewhere in the world at that system, wherever that system is. And it will look like this, a constant pulse. But when you finally close that chest and you stop interacting with it, it will finally disable that system, um, which is really, really cool. Um, this is really convenient for any sort of um, remote system that is a chest shop um, where you have you can buy items through your chest UI or something like that. And I have a UI video on a chest UI video you can check out. And I'm also going to be releasing some um, different approaches and different chest shops that you can build that are more streamlined and straightforward for servers and realms and buying items and stuff. So you'll see that soon enough. Um, okay. So what happens though if you want to? There is another way you can do this, and you can make it so if you wanted to, you could make it so it um, will execute this command repeatedly and spam it. So let's see what that looks like. If you turn this back on, so execute on first tick, the second the second this redstone block appears here, this will actually remove it right away. It's actually not even going to wait 20 ticks. It's just going to instantly remove it. So check this out. So this will actually spam 
the command. So right now, if you look at my chat, I'm going to type in test right here. And you can, so that way we've broken up my chat and you can see that there's no text below here. There's no green text. But now when I open it, watch this. This is a lot faster, right? It's very dramatic now. It's very, very quickly appearing and disappearing, but it's also not a continuous redstone signal anymore. Now it's acting like brand new redstone signals every single time it appears. So that command is issuing repeatedly. So check this out. It's, look at all it's spamming. So now it's issuing the command every single, um, basically every single tick um, that it's there. Um, so it's, it's really, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Actually, I think we can do a slight delay. Let me see, I'm curious. I just set this to zero. Is it actually faster? Nah, no, it's the same. Yeah, it's the same. Anyway, so I can leave this as 20. Um, so that's cool. That if, if you intend for that to happen, then great. That might be useful for some system that you would make. Um, but uh, that, that's a really great way to get a really quick pulse if you want something to be really pulsating really quickly, you can do that. Um, but if you want the continuous charge with no interruption, then you can do this and it's perfect. Okay, so let's check this out. So this is a timing system and it's counting for 10 seconds. And then after 10 seconds, it will disable the whole system. This is very, very simple and it uses scoreboards. Um, and how does this work? Well, let's first make a scoreboard. So we're gonna add a, uh, a, an example scoreboard, impulse unconditional needs redstone. Um, and this, this command you can actually enter right into the chat, so you technically don't even need this command block. But this is going to create a scoreboard um, objective called example. And now, um, right here, when the system's activated, it's going to power a location, power, so impulse unconditional needs redstone, set location to redstone block, as always, right up here. And now we're going to summon a named armor stand. Um, that's right, you can actually summon named entities in this game, um, which honestly is amazing because a lot of people don't know you can do this in Bedrock, and I actually didn't know for the longest time. I always thought this was exclusive to Java, but here's how you do it. So anything that you summon, um, uh, most anything, um, like animals and mobs and armor stands, stuff like that, after the coordinates, type any letter you want, A, Z, T, whatever, type in a letter, and then type in the name that you want that entity to have when they spawn. So in this case, it will spawn with the name example. And this is fantastic because we can immediately spawn this and, and run code targeting that specifically named armor stand. So chain condition always active. Here's the sign. You're, you're going to want to summon it somewhere around here, somewhere over at the system. Uh, now, we want to set that armor stand score to 10 so we can convert it to seconds in the system or on the right. So um, chain unconditional always active, and we're going to set that that exact um, armor stand whose name is example to a score of 10 on the example scoreboard. So um, when that happens, um, as you can see, there we go, it scores 10. And what's technically happening here is repeat unconditional needs redstone, um, leave this on execute on first tick, you want that in this case. Um, now delaying ticks, you wanna put this to 20 ticks. This means that this will activate once per second which will make this um, accurate to um, real seconds, right? Um, okay, so now the way this is working is it's going to execute at the entity. In this case, this is technically the armor stand, but so any entity that has a score in the example scoreboard that's one or more, um, remove one from their example scoreboard. So in this case, if they have 10, that's clearly more than one. So it would be like, it will minus one, so it will go nine. Then eight, seven, six, five, four, fifty-one. 51. But once it gets down to one and it removes one and it becomes zero, it will not allow it to go negative because um, this, again, zero is not is less than one, so it no longer fits this criteria, so it cannot minus one from zero and it go negative. Um, so that's that's how that works. Um, now, chain, now most of these blocks right here, all of them except the last two are gonna be chain unconditional always active. So chain unconditional always active. And here's an example of what I showed you previously. Um, this is the power of when you'd have um, something like this where um, for the entire duration that um, the score is 6 or 10 or everything in between, it's going to say system active. Um, and then once it gets down to 5 seconds, and for most of my systems that I do, I usually reserve for 5 seconds is when I do a countdown, like the final countdown, just because it's, oh, it's only 5 command blocks um, rather than like 10 for like the final 10 seconds, but that's up to you. So chain unconditional, always active. Um, again, these are all chain unconditional, always active. Now, when the score is exactly five, we know we have five seconds left, so now we can tell the players system disables in five seconds. Um, and now these are all the same, four, three, two, one. 
Um, and here, one thing I do as well is I also will change the color to red once it gets really, really low. Um, so it's very evident that the system's almost disabled. And here at zero, um, I will say system disabled. Um, now, these two right here are unique. They have, they have to be conditional command blocks in order for this to work as coded. So in this case, um, this command block and this command, command block can only ever run if this guy right here runs. And this one can only run if the score is equal to zero. So once the score is equal to zero and this command can run successfully, then this chain conditional always active command can run, which is just setting this location down here to air. And then this next one, which is also chain conditional always active, can finally remove that armor stand. So rather than kill the armor stand, um, this is actually, I find a better method for certain things. Um, if you kill an armor stand, depending on if a player's near it, they'll hear a noise, they might see particles or whatever. This actually just will teleport the armor stand um, to minus 70 underneath the game, underneath the bedrock at the lowest level, and it will instantly despawn in the void and get rid of it instantly without any noise or fuss. So it's really, really cool, and that's how that works. And um, just wanted to show you quickly that the way this is currently coded, because this is unconditional, even if these fail, so even if this cannot place a redstone block right here, and this cannot um, summon a new armor stand, um, this will always run no matter what if this is powered. So what that means is that at any point in time, while this is counting down, the way it's, because it's unconditional, I can actually reset the score back to 10 and reset the count. So check this out. This might be useful. You might actually intend to do this for certain systems. So once it gets down to five, I can reset it. Now it's back to 10. However, if I change this to conditional, where these ones also have to success, successfully execute, now I can't do that. See, now it's not resetting. Um, and the reason for that is because again, if this if this block doesn't act run, then this block cannot run either, and that's the case here. So then we cannot reset the score. So again, keep that in mind. Depending on what you're building, that can be very useful. Now this is a very very simple um, system that just runs one tick. Um, one one um, it issues one tick of um, like one one redstone pulse, and that's it. So here we're just going to set as always this location above um, above here right to redstone to activate whatever we want over here. And here we have repeat unconditional leads redstone, execute on first tick, and set the block above to air. You always want to use repeating in, the, in, the, in these cases, like never do a different kind of block than what I'm showing here, um, especially for when it's de depowering or unpowering because um, impulse blocks can get, can get jammed very easily. Um, and then if they get jammed, then the block, this redstone block will stay here forever. And that's what you don't, you do not want that. Um, okay, so that's very simple, and that's just issuing that text alert so we know that the system, whatever you, whatever your system you build there, will execute successfully. Uh, this is a system I came up with, which, which I'm super proud of. Um, this is a full-on toggleable system. So uh, right now it's activated, and of course it's deactivated. And if I mess up this code here so it cannot run anymore, let me just disable this code, I'm just making it fail. Now, um, so I, I just don't want to annoy you guys, I can spin this on and off, um, and I've disabled the sound, and you can see it will just do its thing flawlessly um, and it will end again this is toggleable so once i toggle it on it will stay on until i toggle it off um and it's awesome this this works literally so well that it may as well be like this it works this this well um it works so smoothly that it may as well be connected no matter where it is even though this can be literally hundreds or thousands of blocks away it will still work that responsibly so that's how cool this is i don't know I don't know if you understand how amazing this is, but this is so, so powerful. Um, they have a fully toggleable on or off state across the world, um, no matter where you are. It's very, very cool. Um, okay, so the way this works is here we have an alert system like you've always seen. Um, once the redstone block appears here, like this is just going to be repeat unconditional leads redstone, and it's just going to set this location right here to um, a redstone block. and because it's touching this block, this block will be powered. You can also have uh, have this have this block right here um, be connected uh, with a redstone dust in between, and you might do that if you want to have more commands coming off the side of that block. So if this block becomes powered, these two also do. The way it's currently set up, with the redstone block just simply touching it like that, if you had another redstone block right here, it wouldn't technically activate. Um, but in this case, because it's redstone dust right here, it would still activate. But yeah, it wouldn't activate because of this guy. Um, anyway. So, um, what's happening here, and this is the brains of this whole build, and it's super cool, it's so simple, but so effective. It's, it's really neat, I was so excited when I came up with this. So repeat, unconditional, needs redstone, no ticks of delay. Now what this is doing is it's testing and comparing two different blocks to see if they're the same. So 
right here, you have um, these two coordinates are the same coordinate, and then it's testing to see if this coordinate is the same as these two. So in this case, it's testing this coordinate. So this is the first two coordinates. So it's testing to see if this coordinate right here, this, this lever, is the same as this lever. So it's checking, this, this is of course a lever in the off position. And once this matches the lever in the off position, this command will then execute successfully and then say, hey, yeah, they're both the same, so um, move on. And then this system, which is chain conditional, always active, can now properly run. And that will basically set this location to air, which is this location right here, and disable it. So if I go over here, the second that I press this um, and disable it, um, it will then match this one, right? And then it will turn itself off instantly. It's, it's flawless on how it works. This is really, really cool. Uh, this is seriously a game changer. Um, yeah, really, really cool. Actually, technically, uh, I, when I was showing you this example, I said that this would be, if you put this here, it would activate. It actually won't, because see how it's straight right now? It won't, it will only activate right here. It will power this one. Um, so again, if you wanted um, the blocks on either side of this guy to power, you'd have to add another redstone dust between this. Um, so it would be like this. Um, and then you can have as many, you know, these commands on the side will also then power as well. So yeah. Um, that's how that works. So we can turn that off. Um, finally, I saved the best for last. Uh, this is a very, very powerful, very cool system. Um, let's see, I want to make sure I have the admin tag here. Admin. Okay, I am now the admin. Okay. So this is actually a remote T flip flop. So here you can see that I can activate the system remotely and it's a toggleable system. If you don't know anything about T flip flops, just know that they are generally a redstone thing. Um, it's a typical circuitry thing, actually. But this is a toggleable system that it has an on and off state, just like this. So um, as, of, as you've seen with a bunch of these systems, a bunch of these systems require you to press a specific button in a certain location or a lever in a certain location to activate or deactivate a system. This system, you can be anywhere, literally anywhere, and activate it. Um, and it will stay in that toggle on or off state until you switch it. So now it's activated. Way over there, you can see a little redstone right there. See that in the distance? Now it's gone. Deactivated. Activated and deactivated. It works absolutely flawlessly. And of course, there's a million different systems that you could use um, to power to activate with this thing. It's it's really powerful. So the way this works is I've renamed um, this this uh, iron nugget here to um, remote, and you can use any item you want. Just name it remote or anything you want. Name it whatever you want. So we're gonna test for that item. So repeat unconditional, always active, no ticks of delay. Um, we're gonna test for the item. Um, and, and put in the name whatever you use here, um, remote or whatever you want. Now, we need two comparator blocks, um, one facing this direction to these guys and one facing this direction. Now this is repeat unconditional these redstone and it's gonna kill that um, remote item all the time so it's never gonna leave on, on the ground just like this. It just deletes it so it's stopped there and now I'm gonna disable that again. Okay, so this is really awesome and I'm so proud of the system. And now it's another system I came up with on my own and I'm Super proud of it because it's just, it's, I think this is a real game changer. This is a million times better than any two flip flop that you can make with redstone. Um, redstone with flip flops by comparison are garbage. Um, this is so much better in literally every respect. Not only because it's fully remote, but because it's much, much easier to work with and what you can do with it. It's so much more versatile than a regular um, redstone based T flip flop. So let's see what we can do with this thing. Um, and let's see how this works. So. When this detects the item, this will send a signal this way and this way at the same time. So it will delete the item and then it will also activate these guys. So what these um, commands are doing is impulse unconditional needs redstone. They're both testing a certain location to see if that location is a powered comparator or an unpowered comparator. And depending on which it finds, it will then run the following code respectively. So in this case, um, if I ran this right now and it detects the item and it powers these guys, it's going to say, wait a minute. It's, so this is a comparator it's check testing for. So you would enter the location of this comparator um, into these into this command right here. Um, so once I throw this item and it was to activate these, it would detect that that location is an unpowered comparator. So it should run this chain conditional command. Chain conditional, always active, set location to redstone block. So basically what that's saying is, oh, you know what? This system is, this system is currently unpowered because that comparator is unpowered and it would only be unpowered if the system was not activated. So let's toggle the state of the system like a T flip flop, let's switch the state and turn it on so that it will no longer be unpowered. So 
the next block will then power the system. Okay, now here I'll do that. Now it's powered. Now, if I was to throw this item again, once it's detected and the pulse goes through and it activates these guys again, this one's gonna say, hey, no, you know what? I found a power comparator. So because I found a power comparator, I know that the system is already activated, so I need to switch the state to an off state. So chain conditional always active right here, set that redstone block location to air. So now I know I need to disable the system. Um, now that's incredibly powerful, and here's just the typical alert system that you've seen. But one thing I wanted to point out with this system is um, because you can be anywhere in the world when you activate it, you don't want to limit um, the message radius to a certain area. Um, so you would just have it uh, like tell um, at A, tell route at A. Um, you wouldn't use any like restricting like radiuses or anything like that. Also, um, if you only wanted um, this to issue to a specific player, like an admin, you can go ahead and put um, like tag equals um, admin, and you have to be an admin in order for this message to come to you, or whatever. You know, that's that's how you would do that. Um, okay, and the system again can be as robust or as simple as you want. Um, okay, so let's check this out. Uh, let's disable this for a second. And what we have here is just a, a modification of this system. Now uh, this is really cool, so check this out. Um, let's activate this. So this is currently inactive, so let's turn this back on. So this system um, takes this but adds some brains to it. Now it's going to check to make sure that the player interacting with the system is actually allowed to interact with the system. So they have to be an admin or whoever you decide. So right now I'm an admin, and it's still going to use the same location right here to trigger the system. So check this out. When I throw it, it's going to activate the system, um, just as always. Um, there's no change there, right? But if I'm not the admin, so let me remove the admin tag for myself, you are no longer an admin. Now, when I throw the item, this will happen. No admin is found, and it will just delete the item. And as you can see, it's no longer toggling the state of the system because I'm not allowed to access the system. So if another player somehow found out that the admin had this remote and they could rename any item to remote and try to trigger it on the admin, well, the player can't do anything. There's no way they can trigger the system. Only the admin can trigger it. Only anyone with that admin tag can trigger the system. So it's incredibly powerful in what you can do with that. Um, yes, very, very powerful. So how does this work? Well, let's check this out. Um, so I'm gonna give myself a tag and we're gonna look over here at the code. So this is very similar, but it's repeat, unconditional, always active, no text of delay again. Here, we're only gonna allow the player who has the tag admin to activate the system. So enter this code like this, and of course, change item name if you need to. And then, same as before, uh, compare it going in both directions, this is the same. Um, just removing that item um, called remote. And now these guys right here are the same as over here, identical, there's no changes, so we're gonna keep that as exactly as is. Um, now over here, this is the system that handles checking each and every individual remote and testing to see if um, the player nearest it is actually um, an admin. And if they're not, then, then the item will just be deleted and nothing will happen. The system will not do anything. So really cool. Um, as you can see right here, um, let's look at the code. So right here we have repeat, unconditional, always active. No text of delay, and it's testing for an item named remote, which is, of course, the item we've got right here. Um, okay, so we have a comparator going into this block, and now this is going to actually add a tag um, to that item. So repeat, unconditional needs redstone, and here we're going to execute at one random remote item at a time. So if there's a bunch being thrown, it's only going to execute at one at a time. It's going to then add a tag called check remote at each of them individually. And when it does that, um, it's gonna add a tag to that item called check remote. And then right here, chain unconditional always active, it's going to execute at that specifically tagged check remote remote. And it's going to test that there's an admin, that if the nearest player to that item is an admin. If they're not, then the system will not run. If they are, um, then of course the system will activate as normal. Um, up here we have a chain unconditional always active with a 20 tick of delay cloning command. And I'll show you this in a second. I'll explain this in a second. But here, um, check this out. So I'm gonna make sure I do not have the tag. So I, I'm not the admin right now. And if I go and trigger the system, watch this. 
Um, this block, again, comparators will always detect this, the um, successful or unsuccessful um, uh, detection of this command block behind it. So if this is unsuccessful, this will unpower. If this is success, successful, this will power. So watch this. Um, it detected I'm not an admin, but then it turned back on. Well, how, what, how did that happen? How is it possible that it's saying there is an admin near it when I'm not an admin? As you can see, I'm not an admin. So how is that working? Well, um, I basically force a condition that will make sure that this will eventually um, go back to a positive state where it previously ran successfully. Um, I force that condition because otherwise it will do this, right? So now it's always, it's just gonna stay on perpetually and it will right up here, um, this is a repeat unconditional needs red zone. This is gonna kill the, um, the item that has to check remote tag and here, um, chain conditional always active. We're gonna alert. We're gonna basically say no admin found. Again, you don't actually need to have this code in here. This is just for the demonstration purposes. Um, so you actually don't need admin found, not admin, admin not found kind of stuff. You don't need that. But um, just because I wanted to make sure this code was as, as intelligent as possible, and if you have any other codes up here, I only want them to run when they should be running. So uh, I've basically forced a way to make sure that this this does not stay always active forever. So um, okay. So what I've done here is I force this to be a positive result. So what I'm gonna to do to do that is I'm gonna turn this off for a moment. This right here, turning it off. Um, and now I'm going to copy this redstone torch and move it for a second and break that redstone torch so that this is no longer active and I can throw this item and it will not be um, removed. So I'm gonna give myself the admin tag again and, and watch this. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna to toss one of these items. So let me go a little bit closer, okay. So now I'm close enough for this, item, this this block to be executing successfully because I am an admin and I am within two blocks of that item um, with that tag. So because that's currently positive, I'm going to clone that block with the data. So on PC, that's control and mouse click three, which is mouse wheel pressed in. And then as you can see, I have the data. So all I did was I came over here and placed that block facing up. So this block right here, is chain unconditional, always active, the same exact settings, the same exact code verbatim, it's the same exact thing. But as you can see here, it last found um, a player successfully. So it last ran successfully. And if you look at this block, this block failed to execute um, successfully because it, it's no longer able to run. Um, so what happens here is it re this clone command, I'm gonna place this back on top. Now this clone command, what this just did was I'm gonna clone the block from this location, which is right here. This is the block I placed right here. Again, it's cloned and the previous thing that it did, the previous state was positive and blocks will remember their, um, if they ran successfully or not previously and they will always give a charge based on that criteria. So for example, if I go like this, you can see that this chain block, even though it's unconditional, it's not connected to anything, it still remembers that it previously ran successfully. So it will still give off a positive charge like this, um, which is very useful. We can take advantage of that. So what I'm doing is I'm cloning that block. So these are the first, those first two are that location. And I'm, I'm cloning that to the location right below. So I'm replacing this block right here with this version of that same block, but that ran successfully. So that way I can force the system. Now I, I can turn this back on because now I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Now that I've done that, I can let the item be deleted again. So now um, that I can remove, I'm gonna remove this tag for myself, so I'm not the admin anymore. Um, oh yes, and I need to replace this, so make sure to replace that. Perfect. So now when I go and throw this and I'm not the admin, um, it detects that I'm not the admin and this will unpower, this will power to delete it. But at the same time, after, after a full um, 20, 20 ticks, which is one full second, this, this will this block right here will clone back into place over here, which will turn this back on, which will disable this so it will not continue running. So this, I want to make sure this was as smart as possible. Um, and also, um, if the player um, is not the admin, they can scan this as much as they want. They can throw as many of these items. It will always delete them without fail and they can never use it. So, um, yep, yeah, incredibly powerful stuff. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys learned something from this video. Uh, sorry it's a little long, but I, yeah, I had a lot to cover, and um, I think uh, this stuff is, I think, pretty uh, pretty game game changing for a lot of people, probably. So let me know if you learned something here. Um, let me know what you're going to use these systems for, if any. 
um, what kind of things you're going to be triggering, and uh, let me know if any of these systems were new to you, if you haven't seen these before. Um, please uh, comment, share, like, and subscribe. Um, I really appreciate your time. Thanks, guys, and uh, have a nice day. Take it easy, guys.